Okay, we finally get to build our first uh, game here in Code.org. We've made it all the way to Lesson 21. Um, this one is disguised as a mini project, but it actually is a game. When you finish, uh, it's a really cool feeling because you have made a side-scrolling game where you have a character, you have obstacles, you get points, um, you can get a game over, so um, lots of cool stuff involved. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to uh, kind of walk through, uh, you've already had a chance to see the example on lesson one. Um, all you had to do is click run and you can kind of play the example game. Um, just because there's a lot of kind of trial and error with getting things placed in just the right spot, I am going to just go through each level and kind of read what was suggested to do at each level and then show you my code for what I have done. I think that'll be more quick and efficient. Um, so again, for these videos, the goal is for you to try to do as much as you can on yourself. And this is just sort of a, uh, a follow up and or if you're stuck somewhere, you can kind of see uh, where to get unstuck. So um, hopefully you've got a lot of this done already. But if you're starting from scratch, uh, just make sure you pause the screen and get the code you need. Um, so the first uh, point of what we want to do is for level two is to draw the background. Okay, so obviously mine's going to have everything in it, but I'm going to scroll down. So it is inside the draw loop. It's very important your background is the first thing in the draw loop so that it's behind everything else. Okay, and if you notice, even though it didn't tell me to do it yet, I do have my sprites created above the draw loop. Um, so I made the overall background sky blue. I did a no stroke, so there are no outlines on my shapes. I did a green fill that started with an X of zero and a Y of 300. So if we used our grid, it would kind of remember the rectangle. It's the top left, so right there. And it extends across 400. I could have used 100 for a height, but I used 200 just to be safe. Then I have a yellow fill. It's going to have an ellipse at 50, 100. So if I go to um, 50, 100, so about right here, I'll have a yellow sun. And then it's a 50, 50 size. I have a white fill and ellipse, and it's got different width and height, so I've got a little cloud. So basically, I've got the ground, or the sky, the ground, the sun, and a cloud. So when I click run, the green, that's my ground, there's the sun, there's a cloud, and then the sky blue is the rest of my background. All right, so that is how I did my background. We will go ahead and move on to the next level where we're supposed to create our sprites. All right, and the directions tell us at this point, go to the animation tab and make sure you have the three images you want. The frog, mushroom, and fly are already there, but you can use whatever images you want. Um, so that's going to the animations tab. Um, I just stuck with frog, mushroom, and fly. They were already there, but certainly if you have the time, it is a little bit more fun to change it up, use some different characters. Uh, I had a version of this video I almost uploaded from 2020 where I used a little monster and like a cave cone and coins, but um, there's a few things that were different with the directions. Um, so I figured it was best to do a new video and um, kind of meet you where you are. So find the game set up. So it does tell us set each one to the animation, scale each one, place them where you want them on or off the screen and set the starting velocity X of the target and the obstacle to get them moving across the screen. Test your program. The player should be on the screen and the target obstacle should start off screen and move across the screen from right to left. Okay. Um, this is a little hint. It says the obstacle and target sprite should always move at the same speed. You only need to set a velocity for each sprite one time. Um, you can do this outside the draw loop. So I created a sprite for my player at 150, 275. I then set the animation to the player sprite to be the frog. All right, I then created a sprite for the target at 425, 200. So that 425, that is 25 pixels off screen to the right. And for the target, I set the animation of a fly. All right, and then I have an obstacle that is at 475, 275. And for that obstacle, I chose the image of a mushroom. And then I gave both the target, which is going to be the animation of the fly, and the obstacle, which is the animation of the mushroom, they each have a negative four velocity, meaning they are moving constantly from right to left. Okay, so again, if you run, they start off, off screen, but they come back, okay? 
All right, so that is everything from that level. Okay, let's go to the controls. All right, the up arrow should make the player jump. There are three parts to jumping. Jump up when the key is pressed, go down when you're high enough, and don't fall through the ground. Uh, in all of the stuff in Unit 3, this is probably definitely in the top five, if not in the top three, of uh, probably the largest amount of confusion and the most mistakes. Uh, see with students, um, the order of the jump, something so simple as a jump, um, is very finicky. You have to follow the directions and you have to go in the correct order. If you don't, even if you have the right pieces of code, if it's not in the right order, your jump is going to be glitchy. Something's not going to work with it, okay? So it's very important you follow the comments, okay? So if you're here and watching this video because you can't get your player to jump right, all right, this is where you want to zero in. So the first thing you need to do is set a condition to make the player stop the jump. So this says if the player has reached the ground, stop moving down. Well, what I did when I was creating this was I said, okay, well, where is it going to appear as though my frog is on the ground? Remember, the center of your sprite um, is the XY position. So what I determined by tur turning the grid on and kind of looking at it was, okay, if a, a Y value of about 275, um, that's a little bit above the ground, but it makes my frog's feet be on the ground. So if I run um, and I kind of come right there, okay, I'm obviously past that but the middle of the frog's about right here at 275. So that's why I chose 275. If the Y is greater than or equal to 275, the player's Y velocity is gonna be zero, meaning it, that keeps your frog from falling through the ground. And that needs to come before um, the jump, okay? Then, if the player presses the up arrow, start moving up, okay? And notice I chose the key went down so that you can't just fly, you have to press the key, it triggers it, and then you kind of have your, your jump from there. All right, and so this is a player.velocity y negative four. Remember, as we go up, our y decreases, so that will send the player up at a rate of four pixels per frame when the up key is pressed. Then we want to code in the peak of our jump to kind of be the top of the jump and send the player back down. So then it says if the player reaches the top of the jump, start moving down. So again, just trial and error. I said, okay, well, when the Y gets to be about 115, again, that's going to be the center of the frog. That's a pretty good ways up there. Um, if it is less than or equal to 115, remember, because we're going up, it needs to be a less than. I'm going to change the velocity. Notice I just changed the sign. I'm going to make it a positive 4, which will send the frog back down at the same speed that it came up with. And after that runs, we're kind of finishing that loop. And when we loop back around, the first thing we're going to see is, okay, well, if the player's Y is greater than, so it's going to keep cycling through and check. And when this gets checked first, it'll stop it at zero, pretty close to 275 each time, okay? Um, so that is the jump. So that was do this, find the comment jumping. And I think we did all that. So just to let you see, if I press the up arrow, my frog will jump. Okay, I still got a little bit of the mushroom there. So you're trying to avoid the mushroom, get it. And this does have kind of a glitch where I could just keep pressing the up. There is a way around that, that if I have time, I'll show at the end. If you would like to make it more um, cheat proof, but we do at least have our frog jumping, okay. So we'll move on to level five, which is the looping of our obstacle and our target. Okay, um, so this one wants us to loop. So again, we need to test the X position of, and I don't think we've done functions yet. Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna plug it in. So this is where I loop. And I'm going to do it for both the obstacle sprite and the target sprite. For the obstacle sprite, all right, that's going to be the mushroom. If the X position gets to negative 50, that's going to make sure it's completely off screen. If it becomes less than negative 50, then we're going to reset it at 450. So it maintains that negative velocity. It just kind of teleports from here to here off screen, and then it slides back across. Um, for the mushroom, 
or not the mushroom, sorry, the fly, same thing. When it gets to negative 50, it's going to shoot it back over to 450. However, to add some variation and a little bit more challenge, we give it a random Y position so that the height of the fly is different each time to make it a little bit more challenging so you can't get the perfect timing on your jumps um, just to make the game a little bit more fun. Okay, so um, we've already kind of shown it. So again, they're both going to go. All right, they go off screen, and then they come back. And this is uh, kind of the whole nature of a side-scrolling. Our character is actually standing still, but the ground, um, not the ground, but the objects are moving towards it, but sometimes giving it the appearance that our character is moving. Uh, one way we could add a little bit more to that, again, towards the end if I have time, we could add some movement to our sun and our cloud and kind of have that slowly change at a little bit slower rate than the obstacles are coming at us because they are further away. Uh, but again, that's something um, if we have time, we could do extra. We don't have to do that right away, okay? So that gets our loops done. All right, level six deals with the interactions. So some things we want to check for, okay? Find the code called Sprite Interaction. So I'll scroll down to see where that is right here, okay? Um, so what I did was the first thing was, okay, if the frog touches the mushroom, that's something we're trying to avoid, but if that happens, we want the obstacle to rotate 15 degrees while it's touching. So what this means is every frame that it's touching, that obstacle is going to have that 15 degree rotation, giving it the illusion of it kind of being tilted over, and every frame it's touching, the health is going to decrease by one. Okay, else, meaning the player is not touching the mushroom, the obstacle rotates back to zero so that it's no longer tilted. So if we look, when the mushroom touches the frog, it kind of tilts and then it goes back. Also notice my health, every frame it's touching, it goes down, okay? Um, and that's just the nature of the beast with using the game lab right now with the tools we have um, is just kind of that running, decreasing. That's why the health is set so high to allow multiple hits, okay? Um, for the fly, all right, that's the object we're trying, or the target we're trying to touch and to get points. So if the frog touches the fly or player is touching target, then we want to go ahead and regenerate it, move it off screen. So it's going to get an X value of 450, that random Y value, which is the same as if it went off screen and we didn't get it. And we're going to increase score by one point. It's very important to relocate it first, then increase the score so that we don't have a glitchy score that goes up three times or goes up one time. It's going to go up exactly one point every time we get a fly. Okay? And I think those are the only conditions. Okay? Um, and then we'll go to scoring in the scoreboard, which I did plug in right there. Um, so this will show us how to display the score. Um, so if I go down, that's going to be with the text. Also very important, we have the score or the text after draw sprites so that it's on the top layer. All right, so we have a black fill, text size of 20. We had health and then health. Um, for some reason, code.org has gone in and disabled. The easier way would be to conc concatenate it and just have this and then a plus and then the variable. Um, I don't know when they changed it. You used to be able to do it that way, and now you have to do two separate text commands. But um, notice the Y value of all of my text, whether or not it's a string or the value stored in a variable. Um, it's going to be at a height of 30, and then 70 pixels between um, typing out the word health with a colon and displaying the value stored in health. I'm going to do the same thing for score. So I'm going to make score show on the screen. Um, and then after that, I have no parentheses score. That is the name of the variable. So it's going to show whatever value is stored there. Okay. And then at the end, we didn't do this. I think this was built in, but this is the game over screen. So if health becomes less than zero, background changes to black. There's a green fill and just a green text that says game over appears, and that's all we'll be able to see. Okay, so last step is review the game. Um, so now you can play it, uh, play your game, look over the project, make any last changes. So again, there's some stuff we could do, like if we wanted to, you know, change the control so that we can't just cheat the jump. Um, we haven't 
I don't think we've gotten to logical operators yet. But um, one thing I could do in text mode. So for my jump command right here, um, if you wanted to, I could go to text mode. And I'm going to say if key down went up. I can do um, what's called a lot uh, and operator, so I'm going to do the and sign twice, and I'm going to say player dot y is greater than, and I'm going to say to 60, and what that will do is it will only let me jump if I'm close to the bottom. So now when I run this, if I jump, I can't keep hitting the up arrow. It doesn't do anything. It makes me have to land. So I know you can't see my hand. So I can kind of cheat it still a little bit because I didn't want to get too close to 275 and cause a conflict. But by adding that logical operator right there, you can make it so that you have to uh, be on the ground and jump, and then you can't jump again until you land. So that is, that is one thing you could add. Um, also, if you wanted to add in just for a little bit of extra flair, um, let's just say we wanted to um, make our sun and our cloud move. We could set variables, um, probably mostly for the X, really for the sun, we could do X and a Y. Um, but we could create a variable and kind of have it update um, each frame just at a slower rate, like at a decimal, and kind of have it slowly move. Um, for time's sake, I think uh, I'll pass on that, but if anybody has any questions about how to do that and that explanation is not clear, um, let me know. Okay, and we have now finished our game and we've got a game that we made that we can play.